All right, so let's get into our first key issue for Cape Town tonight. Some eight heads of state and uh, from the West African sub-region are expected to grace the inaugural ceremony of the president-elect Nanado Dankwe Kofod on January 7th, so just some four days away now. At a press briefing in Accra, the inaugural committee revealed some 5,000 security officers will be deployed to provide protection or security on that day. Beginning... See January midnight, Parliament will usher in the new members of Parliament elect who would be sworn into office as members of Parliament, after which the Speaker and Deputy Speakers and leadership will be determined accordingly. And Parliament will then reconvene at the directive of Mr. Speaker at the Independence Square for the major ceremony of the inauguration of the president-elect subsequent to the presidential and parliamentary elections that were conducted on 7th December and the outcome of it respecting the sovereign will of the people recognized by the Electoral Commission of Ghana. We expect a very dignified and honored ceremony. We expect the Ghanaian public to give this event their maximum support and cooperation and we want the outcome of this event to add to the pride of our country as one of the enduring democracies in africa if not one of the best and to deepen our democratic ethos and values by witnessing a smooth transfer of political power from one government, the outgoing administration, to another, the incoming administration. This evening event is to assure you that adequate preparations have been made to usher in the new administration. We will be receiving 11 heads of state and government, two vice presidents, 13 government representatives, five international reps of multilateral organizations, and a number of ex-presidents from West Africa and other parts of the world. Let me add that this is not expected to be the final figure. We will have the final figure about 24 hours to the event. They will be met at the airport and chaperoned to the venue. That is those who will come on the day of the event. And of course, those who will come a day before or days before the event will also be met and will be seen to the accommodation that has been prepared for them. On the day they will arrive at the event after Parliament has seated and also of course before Parliament sits the general public will would have seated. All right, so that's Shelly and also the Honorable Harry and Idris they're speaking for the inaugural committee of both sides. Now, uh, quickly, i uh, just give you a brief of uh, what exactly is expected on the, on the day, uh, just the highlights. As you can see on your screens right now, Al Hassan Iwatara is a special guest. We'll be, we'll be finding out why the choice of him, but 11 heads of state have also uh, confirmed the attendance. 13 government representatives also confirmed the attendance. 6,000 members of the general public expected. 5,000 uh, security personnel also expected uh, to be there. So that's uh, what uh, we're getting now. I've been joined in studio right here on Key Point by Kojo Ponkrumah. He speaks for the incoming administration led by Nanado Dankwe Kofuado's transition team. He's a member of parliament elect for the Ophotia Irebe constituency. It's good to have you, Kojo. Good evening. Chief. Alfred, how are you doing? Happy New Year. Today. Happy New Year. Great, Happy great, New great. Year. Now, now, so before we get into the inaugural ceremony, you talked about the fact that the transition team, which you speak for, 
or on the side of the incoming administration has done 80% of the work. What is left exactly to be done? Well, so let me uh, um, do a quick correction. What we said was that about 80% of the preparations for the inauguration not had the been done at the time. Work. No, not the transition team's work. The transition team, uh, you know, has received all the handing over notes that we're told to expect to receive. Mm -hmm. We have made those handing over notes available to our subcommittees that are working on it. The subcommittees are working on the notes with the technocrats from the side of the incumbent government, ministries, departments, and agencies. Indeed, there are some who have gone to the third step of visiting some of the ministries, departments, and agencies to validate uh, you know, the things in the notes, courtesy uh, an introductory letter that was done by the chief of staff, uh, Julius Debra. So the transition team is going ahead with its work. We do expect to submit an interim report by the 5th of January to the president-elect. So you haven't submitted that interim report as yet? No. We are I yet asked this because there was an earlier communication that you had submitted the interim report to the president-elect. I know sometimes there's a bit of you know, misreportage uh, mm -hmm. in the excitement, but the fact is that we are yet to submit an interim report. We'll do that uh, by the 5th to give him about a 48-hour breather before his inauguration. <coughs> so by the 5th, we will submit an interim report to His Excellency the president-elect um, and then we expect that even after the inauguration, we will now have an opportunity to wrap up our work and deliver the final report by the end of January uh, to the president-elect. Oh, I see. So um, if, if I get the understanding, the, uh, you're already going ahead with the validation of the, the information put in there by the outgoing administration. That is so. Just to be able to authenticate whether that is so. That is it's so. It's going on concurrently yes. with the process. Yes. There are some that are still at the you know, interrogatory stage with the ministries department and agencies. There are some that have gone beyond that and are visiting mm -hmm. um, the ministries department and agencies. And the work is going on, uh, may I say, with a lot of camaraderie. Where there are issues, we are not shy to let the world know what the issues are, but the work must go on in the interest of the country, and it is going on in the interest of the country. Now, last time we spoke, you talked about the fact that the office of the president was left to, to hand over their notes to you. Have they done that as yet? That was the Office of Government Machinery. Yes, they've submitted uh, wow. their report. It's been given to the subcommittee responsible for executive assets, uh, and they are also doing their work on it. I see. So how, it means that everything else is done. You have all the handing over notes you need uh, from the outgoing administration. We have what we're told to expect. The work is going on. We expect to finalize our report and uh, let the chief have it. Now, m moving forward, there's also been that concern about how you handle disagreements. That is, if there has been any uh, in the process of your work, I mean, with the outgoing administration, uh, have any disagreements or issues ar arisen which has uh, led to some disagreements in there? Well, I think the major thorny issue has been some of the appointments and contracts and uh, payments that have been done uh, without recourse to the transition team as was agreed. We all okay. know what the law is, but in addition to the law, we came to an agreement to make things smooth. And we witnessed what was going on on the side, and we had reason to let the world know. That objection has been stated, mm -hmm. but beyond the stating of the objection, we're going on uh, currently with the work. Currently, one of the major things is the uh, inauguration subcommittee that is working to ensure that the president-elect and the vice president-elect are inaugurated um, on Saturday, as well as uh, the new speaker and uh, the seventh parliament of the fourth republic as well. You've already served notice that you're going to review all the appointments that are being made in this last minute uh, stages of John Muhammad's administration. You're still sticking to that. We have served notice that the incoming administration reserves the right to review. Mm -hmm. Now, when the new president takes office and he reviews all that has gone on, he will now take a decision on what he wants or does not want to do. At this moment, what's the uh, NPP's team on the transition committee mm -hmm. did uh, a couple of weeks ago was to serve notice that by virtue of the fact that contrary to what was agreed, these things were being done without consultation and engagement as was agreed. Mm -hmm. We wanted to state for the knowledge of the general public, especially for third parties who were getting into some of these engagements with government, that the incoming government reserves the right to review. I think that's been stated. Mm -hmm. We're going on with the work. So by close of January, um, all other things being equal, you would have the, the whole process of transition completed. We expect to submit a final report by the end of January and to have that report delivered to the president mm. by then, mm. by the 3rd of February. You talked about 80% of work ahead of the inaugural ceremony on Saturday. So could you just give me exactly what is going in there and, and who are we expected? 
to, to So to first you need to party. prepare the grounds, Parliament House, and by virtue of the fact that the presidential inauguration is such a huge event and it cannot take place within the Chamber of Parliament, even though the Constitution says it should be done before Parliament, mm -hmm. that is being done at the Black Star Square. So you need to prepare Parliament, you need to prepare the Black Star Square. You have guests and international dignitaries, you have security arrangements, logistics arrangements mm -hmm. that you need to prepare. So in terms of guests, uh, as has been mentioned, we're expecting about 11 heads of state, including uh, President Alassane Ouattara of uh, Cote d'Ivoire. He's a special guest of honor. Uh, about uh, 10 other heads of state from uh, across Africa, including the president of um, Equatorial Guinea, uh, Liberia, Gabon, Guinea, Conakry, uh, the prime minister of Mauritius, and a few other heads of state and heads of government. We're also expecting about 6,000 invited guests to be within what we call the inner perimeter. And these are guests from, uh, you know, all over the world who are going to uh, join Ghana for a ceremony like this and help us tick a new page in our democratic uh, history. Beyond these about 6,000 guests in the inner perimeter, there's room for another about six to 7,000 guests in the bigger stands of the Black Star Square uh, for Saturday. So the grounds, uh, are being prepared. If you go to the Independence Square right now, the Black Star Square right now, you see a lot of work going I on. I see some of your enthusiastic supporters also there complimenting the work of, of Zoom Lion. But issues of security always come up anytime we have this event. How far with that as well, that aspect? Of we, the as you mentioned rightly earlier, we have about 5,000 men and women drawn from the various security yeah. agencies who will be doing a number of things to ensure that mm. everybody who comes there is protected, mm. is uh, uh, adequately provided mm. for uh, on the day. There will be a lot of uh, screening and guidance of guests who are there mm -hmm. and that's why today we took time to explain to all invited guests, one, to be on time and two, also to um, cooperate with the security agencies as they go through the uh, screening processes and the engagement with the crowds. I see. Now, uh, you talked about the Ivory Coast President, Alassane Ouattara, being the special guest of honor for that event. you mind sharing with us exactly what went into the choice of Alassane Ouattara, uh, a special guest? His Excellency uh, Alassane Ouattara is a, uh, is a president and a man who represents a lot of what, uh, may I say, a president-elect Akufuado would want to do with the Ghanaian story. This is an experienced politician, an economist in his own right, a man who took over a country that had you know, come out of its own struggle and within a very short period was able to or has been able to turn around the story to the extent that Cote d'Ivoire today is by far one of uh, uh, the choicest business destinations on the West African coast. Uh, if you look at their current economic numbers, if you look at their current ratings on the world stage, mm -hmm. it is a story to be proud of. He represents a lot of what President-elect Akufuado would want to do with the Ghana story and it's no wonder that he was uh, you know, asked to join us for uh, an occasion like this to be our special guest of honor and he uh, uh, you know, also agreed to do that. And uh, so we're expecting to have him and to grace the occasion with his honor and, um, you know, uh, 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 a bit of what he has done as well. Uh, it would be surprising to see Ghana's ties with Ivory Coast strengthened within the Akufuado administration. Absolutely. There will also be a lot of, uh, you know, bilateral mm -hmm. meetings on the sites. Uh, we do expect um, mm -hmm. um, a meeting with uh, President Ouattara, yes, to, you know, work to strengthen our ties with Cote d'Ivoire and indeed our ties with many of the other heads of state and their countries. I see. So after the inaugural ceremony, any planned events uh, after? The there are a number of events. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be um, a reception for the heads of state and the members of parliament at the banquet hall of the state house immediately after the Independence Square, the Blaster Square event. There's mm -hmm. going to also be later in the evening what we call sort of a national cocktail okay. where thousands of Ghanaians who are being invited from all over the country to join uh, the first family and the vice president and his family and um, the new administration at the presidency. We will also have um, a dinner later in the evening for the heads of state and uh, His Excellency the President uh, at the time. And then uh, uh, for the rest of us at the Black Star Square, we're going to have um, a one Ghana concert featuring you know, various Ghanaian artists from all walks of life to help join us celebrate the best of Ghanaian talent. Fantastic. So, could you thank you very much. He all is the, the member of parliament elect for the Ofoasia Irebi constituency. He speaks for the incoming administration's transition team as well. Could you upon Kromagaya?